Data storage is a complicated yet integral part of computing. This is why protecting stored data is a top priority, no matter what a computer is used for. No one wants to lose their data, and this is where RAID comes in. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. RAID quite literally is a redundant system to protect the data that is stored on your storage device. So in this video, we'll go through what RAID 0 and RAID 1 are, and what are the differences so that you can choose the right configuration that works for you. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrin we love to make and talk tech so if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. RAID is a method of using two or more disks to store and arrange data. There are many different ways to do this with different pros and cons. Some of these pros and cons can include things like storage capacity, fault tolerance and the overall performance of your system. RAID works by distributing the data amongst different disks to create redundancy and to protect your data for the most part. Data can be distributed in different configurations and these configurations are known as RAID levels. Each RAID level offers different levels of redundancy and performance. More redundancy can typically mean less performance and vice versa, but it gets a little bit more complicated than that, obviously. So let's compare arguably the two most used RAID levels at a consumer level, and that is RAID 0 and RAID 1. RAID 0 is the most basic type of RAID levels. Also known as striping, data is striped across at least two disks, meaning that the data is divided between two or more disks. In RAID 0, you are basically combining multiple drives to to one big drive with its capacity combined. Any file you store will be divided between the two or more disks, not on each disk. The data is basically cut into smaller files and then written across all of the physical disks connected to that RAID 0 configuration. This then increases the read and write performance as it's using two or more disks to receive the data. While this RAID has the benefit of improving performance and increased storage capacity, it is also more vulnerable to failure. This is because in RAID 0, there are no redundancy measures. There is only striping of data without any parity or mirroring. So what is parity and mirroring you might be asking? Well, that's obviously what I'm here for. Disk mirroring is the process of replicating the logical disk volumes onto separate physical disks. A mirrored volume is a complete logical picture of a certain volume onto another physical disk. So in case the main physical disk is connected or crashes, the data is still available for use because a complete copy is available on another disk. Parity or parity bits is a relatively simple way of checking errors in code. A parity bit is a very simple and commonly used error detection code in storage. It basically involves adding a parity bit to data and then cross-checking the bit code of the original data with the data being checked. In certain RAID configurations, a disk or a set of disks contain parity information that allows them to rebuild data in the event of a drive failure. This brings us onto the second level of RAID, also known as RAID 1. In RAID 1, data is mirrored from your main disk to another disk, but no parity or striping is happening. So, two drives in a RAID 1 configuration will be copying each other's logical picture, so in case one physical drive goes down or out of action, the data is still available to the user. RAID 1 is pretty handy in mirroring or cloning a drive, as basically every data you store on one physical drive is automatically stored on all the other drives in RAID 1 with each other. This is a pretty powerful and simple way of creating a redundant system System because even if one of the drive fails, you will still have a backup of the data across all of the other drives in the RAID 1 configuration. RAID 0 and RAID 1 handle data in completely different ways from each other. RAID 0 puts all of the drives connected to one single logical volume so that you will have a huge amount of space available and has far better performance than using each disk individually. However, this is at the cost of zero data safety and redundancy. RAID 1, on the other hand, involves using multiple disk drives to mirror each other, thus creating an in-sync backup of all of the data saved. So in case one of your drive goes down, you haven't lost all of your data. But this does come at a cost of increased costs for the same level of data capacity as you will have to double the amount of drives as compared to RAID 0 to have the same capacity. 
This is because in RAID 1, the entire data being stored has to be written twice in parallel to each disk. So example time, if you have two four terabyte drives and you configure them in RAID 0, your computer will see it as an eight terabyte drive where the data will be split between the two four terabyte drives. So when you want to open up a file, this one file is shared on the two drives and your computer will grab this one file from the two drives, meaning an increase in read performance rather than grabbing this file from just one of the drives. This also goes for writing to the drive as well. However, the downside of all of this is that your drives aren't safe as basically if one of them goes down, you lose all of your data. This makes it only suitable for temporary data where you have a backup already. Many video creators use RAID 0 configurations because they need the best read and write speed performance possible. If you configured these same two four terabyte drives in a RAID 1 configuration, your computer will only see these two drives as a single four terabyte drive, but the data is mirrored on both of those drives, meaning that if one of those four terabyte disks go down, you will still have another disk where the data is exactly the same. Now, aside from having a smaller capacity, read and write performance also takes a hit as you have to copy the same file to both drives. So basically twice the work. Now RAID 1 can offer similar read performance as RAID 0 if the RAID controller in your docking station is using multiplexing to read data from the disk. So in this case, only write performance takes a hit. When we covered the Sabrin Extreme Q 16 terabyte Thunderbolt external SSD, which has two eight terabyte NVMe SSDs, which can be configured in RAID 0, RAID 1, or JBOD, here you can see the different real world performance differences between all of these RAID configurations. Pause the screen if you need to. Now there are other RAID levels other than RAID 0 and RAID 1. RAID levels 1 to 6 are normally the standard RAID levels and then there are other hybrids and nested RAID levels that combine the advantages of two different RAID levels in a single configuration. Important RAID levels that you should know about other than RAID 0 and RAID 1 are probably RAID 5 and RAID 10, which we will cover in other videos. So be sure to stay subscribed for that. RAID levels offer many different options tailored for different needs and different levels of failure tolerance. Each RAID level offers different types of usability as well. RAID 0 comes in handy if you want to stripe your data and increase the overall virtual disk space and maximize the performance. RAID 1 on the other hand is great for setting up a backup hard drive so that in case one of your drives fail, you won't lose all of your data. This does mean slower write speeds, but this is the cost of having that extra fault safety. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. If you found this video interesting and helpful, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with more content like this one. Also, leave a comment down below on what you would like explained or any other topics you would like us to cover or dive into a little bit deeper, because I love hearing your ideas. Anyway, look after yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.